The Lewis dot symbol is a representation or a notation that we use when we're trying to make predictions about the way an atom will either ionize or bond. So we're going to say that it is notation that is used to make predictions about ionization and bonding. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw the Lewis dot symbol for any atom on the periodic table. The Lewis dot symbol comes from the electron configuration for an atom. So if we want to draw the Lewis dot symbol, we don't necessarily have to write out the full electron configuration, but we need to be familiar with the concept of electron configuration. And so for our first example, we're going to draw the Lewis dot symbol for bromine. And we're actually going to write out the full electron configuration for bromine prior to drawing its Lewis dot symbol. So let's go to a periodic table and find bromine. It is located over here. And instead of using a noble gas abbreviation, we're going to draw, we're going to write out the whole entire electron configuration for bromine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the principal quantum numbers over here on the, the left-hand side to help us out with this notation. And we are going to write out the electron configuration for bromine. So if we're not using a noble gas abbreviation, as a reminder, we're gonna start here with hydrogen and we're just gonna simply work our way across the periodic table from left to right counting as we go. Remembering that we are starting in the 1s area and we've got two of those 1s electrons, so we're going to say 1s2, and then we move on down to the n equals 2 where we have 2s2, and then over here are the two p's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 2s2, 2p6, and then we move on down to n equals 3 where we have 3s2, 3p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then we move down to the next row, n equals 4. Now here we have 4s2, let's write that down. And then in the next area here, remember this is our d elements, our d block. And in the d part of the periodic table, these numbers are offset. So this is the three Ds. Then when we come back over here to this side, we're going to be back lined back up again. Uh, but we left off here with 4s, so now we have 3d, there's 10 of those, so that's 3d10, 3d10, and we're back over to, we're here right now, we're back to the normal numbers, so I'm going to put those normal numbers back, 4 and 5, we're matching, these numbers are now matched back up here. This is, these are the p elements, so this is 4p5. 4p5. So there is our full electron configuration for bromine. And I'm going to cut that and take that back over to this slide, paste it over here so we have it as reference. And here is the full electron configuration for bromine. Now the Lewis dot symbol notation focuses only on the valence electrons, which means that now that we have our electron configuration, what we need to do is focus on finding the valence electrons so that we know how many there are. Remember the valence electrons are the electrons that are in the highest uh, n, which we have n equals one, we have some n equals two, we have some n equals three, and then we also have some n equals 4. n equals 4 is our highest value of n. So these that I'm highlighting, these are our valence electrons. These are the ones that are in the highest n value. So we have a total of 7 electrons in the n equals 4 level, which is just another way of saying that we have 7 valence electrons. Those seven valence electrons are the electrons that are going to be shown in our Lewis dot symbol. So the Lewis dot symbol shows 
the valence electrons for an atom. To draw the Lewis dot symbol, we're going to write the atomic symbol again, so we'll put it over here, and then we're going to represent these seven valence electrons as dots around the atomic symbol. The way that we represent the dots is by first drawing one electron or one dot each in the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions, imagining if this was a clock. And once we get one dot into each of these four positions, then we come back around again and add more dots as needed until we get to the correct number, which for this case is seven. So this is notation that's showing us the seven dots means that we have seven valence electrons. Again, I want to make sure that I point out before we go look at some more examples is that we are going to uh, represent each electron, each valence electron, as a dot. The dots are going to go in the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and nine o'clock positions, putting one dot or one electron in each position before we put two in any. Let's practice this with some more examples. So I've got 10 elements here and we're going to uh, draw the Lewis dot symbol. So I've got the atomic symbols and we're just going to fill the Lewis dot symbols in for each of these atoms. We're also going to look up the valence electrons for each one of these atoms to use that as a way of helping us draw the Lewis dot symbol. Now we don't need um, to write the electron configuration for every element the way that we did for the first example. We can actually get to the valence electrons much faster just simply by looking at where the element is located on the periodic table. This is a trick that I've introduced to you before, but it's definitely handy to um, see it again. We have seen in previous videos that all of the elements that are in the group 1A, the first column, all of these elements have one valence electron. And all of our elements in group 2A, have two valence electrons. In group 3a, they have three, and this trend continues across the periodic tab table. The only exception to this is helium. Helium only has two valence electrons, but all of the other elements in this column have eight. So knowing this, um, something that we have uh, walked through, I've walked through where these numbers actually come from, so you've seen where they come from, but just kind of remembering these numbers and it, uh, it helps make this process go a lot faster. So if we go back to this set of examples right here, the first thing before we draw the Lewis dot symbol, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is how many valence electrons do we have for that atom? For sulfur, if we go back to the periodic table and find sulfur on the periodic table, we can see that it is in column 6A, which means it has six valence electrons. Once we know how many valence electrons there are for the atom, then we can draw its Lewis dot symbol very quickly. We're going to start, I always start at the 12 o'clock position and we're gonna draw six dots, putting one dot in each position before we double any of them up. So there's the Lewis dot symbol for sulfur. Now I do wanna point out before we continue that the Lewis dot symbol doesn't necessarily need to be drawn exactly like this because you don't need to start at the 12 o'clock position when you're drawing these dots. So you could end up with a Lewis dot symbol that has the, the single dots in different positions than what I'm showing here. What really matters or what makes this, this Lewis dot symbol correct is that we have a total of six dots and that we have two pairs and two singles. That, that is all that really matters. And their actual positioning is not that important. So this Lewis dot symbol is just as correct as the one that I had drawn originally. 
So we'll do one more example of flipping back to the periodic table to find valence for our next element, Cl, which is chlorine. We go back to the periodic table and find chlorine, which is in group 7A, which means that it has seven valence electrons. So we're going to draw the Lewis dot symbol by putting seven dots around the chlorine putting uh, each dot alone before doubling any of them up. And again, all that really matters here is that you have seven total dots, one by itself, and three pairs. For the rest of these, I'm not going to keep flipping back and forth to the periodic table. We'll just talk about how many valence they have. Carbon has four valence electrons, and so that means its Lewis dot symbol is four single dots. That's what it looks like. Neon has eight valence electrons, and so its Lewis dot symbol is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hydrogen has one valence electron, so there is its Lewis dot symbol. And again, you don't have to start these at the 12 o'clock position. You could start drawing these dots anywhere you want. All that matters, again, is that you have the right number of dots, and you have the right number of pairs and dots all by themselves. Calcium... Uh, has two valence electrons, so its Lewis dot symbol looks like that. Maybe you don't like the way that looks, you want it to be symmetrical, maybe you want to draw it like that, that's fine. Titanium, boy this is a kind of a trickier one. Titanium is located right here on the periodic table, which means we don't have these guidelines here for helping us quickly predict how many valence electrons it has. We're going to have to use an, uh, a, an electron configuration to, to figure that out. So let's actually come back to that, let's save that one for the end. Sodium has one valence electron, so here is its Lewis dot symbol. Aluminum has three, one, two, three, and nitrogen has five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go back to titanium, where I think we're ready for it. When you're dealing with an element that is in this part of the periodic table where we don't have this trick to help us know how uh, what the valence is, then we are going to need to write out or at least think about the electron configuration for that element. We absolutely can use the noble gas abbreviation. There isn't any reason to not. So for titanium, if we want to use the noble gas abbreviation, we're going to back ourselves up to argon. That is the previous noble gas. So we use argon, and then once we get to argon, we turn around and go forward again. We are in N equals 4, so that's 4S2. And then in our next area here, this is the 3D. Uh, 3D, there are 2 in the 3D. So again, we're, we're only looking for the highest uh, N, which is the 4S2. The three Ds, those are not in the highest N, that's N equals three. So titanium has two valence electrons. Let's go back and copy that down before we forget. And there's two valence electrons right there. There's only one exception to all of this. On the whole entire periodic table, there's only one exception to drawing the Lewis dot symbol. And that one exception is helium. Helium, we talked about this guy before, so he's just kind of in a weird position here. Even though he is in group 8A, helium only has two valence electrons. So we know that it has two valence electrons. That, that's not the exception. The weird exception with helium is that instead of the Lewis dot symbol like this, the two valence electrons are actually in a pair. And it doesn't matter where we draw that pair. Um, so this, again, this is the only exception to drawing the Lewis dot symbol. Helium's two electrons are in a pair.